All right, what's going on guys? So today I have Jose Rojos, Darth underscore flex on Instagram. He's gonna go over combat sports nutrition, all right? So when it comes down to sports performance from a nutritional side, that's going to enhance combat sports performance, this is the guy. He's been with me for over four and a half years, been working alongside me with Dustin Poirier, Junior Dos Santos, Joanna and Jacek. So he knows a thing or two about nutrition and weight cutting for the combat sport athlete. So here you go, you're welcome. How's it going guys? I'm Jose with Very Strong Performance. Today we're going to go over performance nutrition for combat athletes. Okay, so we're gonna start with nutrient timing, probably one of the most important things that we need to consider. And I think uh, people focus too much on maybe protein, but the timing should be a little bit more focused on carbohydrates. So right here we have carbohydrates. Post-exercise, we're looking at about eight to 10 grams per kilogram of body weight, right? I know this may be a little bit hard to just calculate. You can just easily buy something like a carb shake to refuel. But the biggest reason why we take post-exercise carbohydrates is to replenish glycogen. With like glycogen stores, we have no energy. Without energy, we don't recover, we don't perform well. So we have to make sure that we are fueling our body with carbohydrates post-exercise. Studies also show that if we take a protein a bolus with our carbohydrates at about a three or four to one ratio, carbohydrates to protein, it's going to further increase um, glycogen resynthesis. We also see that if we take something like creatine, maybe 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight a day, it's gonna further enhance the adaptations from the resynthesis and recovery. I know that's gonna be a little hard. I would say just dose five grams of creatine with your carb drink or just throughout the day because the creatine does saturate the cells. You have it in there. You don't have to worry about so much of the timing, just that you are taking that per day. During exercise, we still want to take in some carbohydrates too, especially for combat athletes. who are constantly sweating. You're grappling, you're sparring, coming for stress and conditioning. It's very demanding on the body. You are definitely going to deplete your glycogen stores, both in the muscle and in the liver. So we have to replenish. So while you're exercising, you still want to take if you make a solution of it, you're gonna be about 10 to 15 ounces of water, and six to 8% of that should be carbohydrates. You can add other stuff in there like electrolytes, but six to 8% should be carbohydrates. And you're gonna drink that every 15 to 20 minutes, okay? So you can just refill a bottle with that same solution, or you can make a larger bottle, and you can also buy pre-made drinks like that. So any kind of carb shake, any kind of intro workout, you can use to replenish your glycogen stores and maintain sugar levels during exercise, which will in turn improve performance as well as recovery. You're not gonna reach fatigue as quickly because you have the energy to support your metabolic demands. Now we're looking at protein selection. This is another important thing. While it may not be as important for fueling your workout as far as giving you the glycogen needed, it is still needed for recovery, it is still needed for performance because you want to feel good while you perform. When you're looking at protein, one of the biggest things you should look at is a high leucine content. So what does leucine do? Leucine is an amino acid that improves your muscle protein synthesis. What that means is we're able to take the protein we're ingesting and properly use it for building muscle, for recovery, it's feeling better. Now, here's the thing is, when you're looking at animal-based and plant-based proteins, you're gonna see a much lower leucine content in plant-based proteins, which is totally fine. You can very easily supplement leucine by just buying the amino acid either in capsules or in powder form. But just know that you will not be getting the same leucine content in plant protein that you would from an animal-based protein, whey protein being the highest specifically in leucine content. So if you take a hemp protein, it would be a good idea to supplement with some kind of leucine supplement, whether it's powder, whether it's a liquid or whether it's a capsule. Your protein, if you're getting a good quality protein, you're looking at about 20 to 25 grams per serving. I, honestly, anything lower than that, you're not really using for, for performance. I mean, this the, this serving below this is gonna be pretty low. Frankly, I think it's a waste of money if you're, if you're paying $60 for a five tub of protein that only gives you 15, 12 grams of protein per serving. You definitely wanna be at this level. And if your only option is to purchase proteins that have a lower content, I would say double up on the scoops because you want to get at the very least a good quality dose of 25 grams of protein with leucine, hopefully, if not plant-based and take some leucine supplement with it. You also want to make sure it has a low carbohydrate or low sugar content. A lot of people make the mistake of buying a protein with, that is meant to be a mass gainer. So you're taking protein, yes, but now you're taking 
300 grams of carbohydrates. So you want to make sure that your protein is lean. Um, in, in something like combat sports, you're not too worried about putting on weight. I would say you're much more worried about lowering your weight. You don't need to take protein that has a high sugar content or a high carbohydrate content because it's just not necessary. You're using a protein for recovery and to get a good quality amount of protein with leucine. So when it comes to carbohydrates, worry about it on this part. Be worried about just the timing, which is pre and post or during. Whey protein versus casein protein. That's one thing you'll see a lot too. Whey protein is going to be your fast delivery protein. This is what you will ideally take before training if that's how you like to take it or after, right? And again, you're looking at these doses. With casein protein, this is going to be a slower digesting protein. This you would take in between meals, you have to skip a meal or before bed. So this is kind of an anti-catabolic supplement. All it's doing is it's reducing the amount of lean mass you would lose in a caloric restriction, which sleep is a caloric restriction. You are fasting while you sleep. So it does help reduce the amount of muscle you may lose. It's an excellent supplement if you're trying to put on a little bit of mass, but maintain it during a caloric restriction. So make sure when you're looking for protein, you look for these things. Leucine, it has a high leucine content, low carbohydrate content. If it's plant-based, make sure that you are supplementing with leucine so you can increase your muscle protein synthesis. And you're looking at 20 to 25 grams per serving to get the most bang for your buck. Now, we're looking at performance supplements. The first one is HMB, which is actually a metabolite of leucine, right? But no matter how much leucine you take, it doesn't necessarily dictate the amount of HMB you will produce or you will break down and metabolize. And HMB stands for beta hydroxy beta methylbutyrate. This is what actually increases muscle protein synthesis through the mTOR pathway. So this is a very good supplement to take. And when you're doing a wake up, you're gonna be in a, in a very, very intense caloric deficit. You're also going to be in a hypohydrated state. What you want to do is take HMB to preserve the amount of lean mass you gain during your camp. That way you're not coming in depleted, coming in smaller and weaker after your weight cut. So this is gonna help you preserve as much lean body mass, as much strength as you can during your, I would say the last 10 days of your fight camp, or if you have to start cutting before that, start reducing weight via a caloric deficit. This is gonna help you maintain your muscle, maintain your strength, okay? Caffeine. Caffeine is probably the staple of all performance supplements. It's in every pre-workout. It's going to be what helps you, gives you the energy, the push, it helps alertness, it helps cognitive performance. It helps increase the pain threshold, right? So your rate of perceived exertion will increase. And that's a good thing because now you can work harder, right? Your output might be better, but also if you're in a sport and right, you're getting hit, even though it's minimal, that pain threshold improvement might make the difference on how hard you push in your next training session. Beta alanine. Now we've covered this before in our videos here with Phil. Beta alanine is a very important supplement that is going to be an intramuscular buffer and it is the rate limiting substrate for carnosine, right? Without beta alanine, there's no carnosine. Without carnosine, there's no muscular buffering system. What this does is going to help you buffer out the acidity in your muscles from the overproduction of lactate, which in turn produces the hydrogen ion, which makes your muscles highly acidic. As you get that burning sensation, you can only keep your hands up or you start to fatigue. So in short, beta alanine will prolong the time to fatigue, which is a good thing. It means you'll get tired much later on, be able to increase your workload so you can do more within that time because you're not burning out. So we're looking at NO supplements or nitric oxide supplements. Those are typically your powders. You can take your powders to increase the NO pathway in your body, increase circulation, vascularity, and so on. The most common and most, um, I guess if you're worried about any kind of third-party tested supplements, the most common way to take it and probably the best for you is through beetroot juice, okay? Eating beets probably won't be as efficient or practical to do so, so you'd have to juice them, but beetroot juice significantly increases the NO pathway in the body, increasing nitrates in the body, therefore you have better blood flow, better vascularity. Okay. ZMA is another one. So ZMA is commonly taken for rest, right? Restful sleep, recovery during sleep. But this does have a significant increase in your performance because it's zinc magnesium aspirate. You know, we need zinc, we need magnesium. It's gonna help muscular contractions. It's gonna help cramps and so on like that. So something like ZMA, yes, it's gonna help you rest. It's gonna help you recover. But now when you're in the gym and you're lifting and you need those muscular contractions, having some zinc and magnesium in your body is very important. Lastly, we're looking at creatine. Creatine has various performance benefits. One, I think the main one being energy production. With the phosphate from, or the phosphorus from creatine, you can produce more ATP. You take the phosphorus, put it into ADP, and then you have ATP, and you have more energy to work. But also, it's going to increase the workload. In a sport where you're getting hit constantly, you want to protect the brain. 
But as far as performance goes, this works hand in hand with everything else to improve your use of energy and improve your resynthesis of energy. All right, guys, so there you have it. Hope you could take this with you. If you wanna find out more details on this particular subject, you can go ahead and check out my mentorship program. Link is in the description now. It's a one-time fee where you'll get access for life. Jose comes on there and he talks a lot when we go through our bi-weekly meetings where you get a Zoom call with me where we go over Q&A for the entire hour. So if you wanna check out more, link is in the description. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification, hit the like button if you wanna see more Jose, hit the comments down below, and I'll see you again next time. Peace.